Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, leçon A. And in this lesson, we'll see together identical words in English and in French. And we'll concentrate this video on the words in English that will end with I, B, L, E. Because actually, they will be written uh, almost the same way. I mean, in most of the cases, they will be written the same way, but not in all the cases, of course. And uh, the meaning will be the same, all right? But then the first thing that you've got to keep in mind is that uh, the word must exist in French because all the words ending with E, B, L, E in English, um, well, they don't exist in, uh, in French, okay? And then the second thing, thing, as I said, in some cases, few exceptions or modifications uh, when it comes to writing and, of course, uh, pronunciation. Okay, so we'll see that together and we'll start right now. Accessible. Admissible. Audible. Bible. Combustible, comestible, compatible, compréhensible, conductible, constructible, convertible, corruptible. Crédible, divisible, éligible, extensible, flexible, fusible, horrible, impassible, implausible. Impossible, inaccessible, inadmissible, inaudible, <laughs> it waits away, incombustible, incompatible, incompréhensible, inconvertible. Incorrigible, incorruptible, indestructible, indivisible, inéligible, inflexible, intelligible, invincible, invisible. Irrésistible, passible, possible, reconstructible, répréhensible, réversible, risible, sensible, terrible. Transmissible, visible. And that's it. Uh, if you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier. And then like me on Facebook. I will be so happy. The address is right here. And then the website is waiting for you. www.imagier.net Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, leçon B. And in this lesson, we'll see together identical words in English and in French, and especially the words that will end with A, B, L, E. Okay? So, if we're talking about the words ending with A, B, L, E, you've got to remember that first it must exist in French. If it exists in French, then the meaning will be the same. Okay? And the second thing you should 
think about is that in some cases we will have when it comes to the, the writing of the word few exceptions or modifications possible okay so let's start now abominable absorbable acceptable adaptable administrable admirable adoptable adorable applicable appréciable arbitrable assimilable attachable biodégradable blâmable câble calculable capable cartable censurable certifiable changeable chargeable classifiable confortable commandable comparable confessable confirmable contestable cultivable défendable déformable dégradable déplorable détachable détectable durable estimable évitable évitable excusable fable favorable filmable fixable formable formidable friable groupable habitable héritable honorable identifiable imitable impalpable implacable importable improbable incapable inclinable incommunicable incomparable incontestable indispensable inflammable inhabitable inimitable inséparable instable interminable intolérable invariable invulnérable lamentable limitable manipulable mémorable mimable misérable notable palpable payable portable qualifiable quantifiable recyclable rentable représentable sociable solvable sortable stable table tenable tolérable transportable transposable véritable and that's it you've got 99 words uh, if you want more videos then youtube.com slash imagier and then the website or sorry no <laughs> like me on facebook facebook.com slash imagier.net and the website finally <laughs> www.imagier.net have a great day bye bye bonjour à tous and welcome to learn french with vincent this is unité 13 leçon c and in this lesson, we'll see something quite important. It will be a short lesson, actually, but then it will be really, really important. And we're talking about la place de l'adverbe. And uh, we will focus on this video when we've got what we call uh, une forme composée de verbe. So if you're thinking about, uh, for instance, passé composé, all these composed tenses where you've got two parts. Remember, first you've got avoir or être and then the second part is le participe passé okay so we'll see uh, where we should put the adverb l'adverbe when we've got this type of structure okay so 
we'll see only one sentence and we'll see the different possibilities we get uh, so where to put this adverb okay so the first one here we get il a attendu patiemment le train okay so here we've got the verb attendre attendre is to wait and uh, this is the passé composé form if you remember so first you've got avoir at the present tense and then this form is what we call participe passé okay so il a attendu and then i mean that's the rule normally uh, the adverb l'adverbe should come after the verb okay so you put it right here patiemment patiently okay and then le train the train il a attendu patiemment le train all right so that's i mean the first option you could have if you want to construct this type of structure in which you will have this adverb okay and then if you get this structure like here when you get a composed tense so two parts okay but then the same sentence and it's also possible il a okay so first you will put avoir so you don't change the structure of uh, the sentence but then it's possible to put your adverb right here after avoir il a patiemment and then you continue here your participe passé attendu le train okay so the first one il a attendu patiemment le train and then the second one il a patiemment attendu le train all right and then we've got a third option so it will be it would be also possible to put it like that il a attendu le train and then you put your adverb at the end here patiemment okay oops sorry there is a space here and should it be here so il a attendu le train patiemment okay so let's see again the three options we've got the first one il a attendu patiemment le train second one il a patiemment attendu le train and the last one il a attendu le train patiemment and that's it if you want more videos then youtube.com slash imagier like me on facebook i will be so happy and this is your address and uh, last but not least more material www.imagier.net have a great day bye bye Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 13, Leçon D. And in this lesson we'll see together what we call les locutions adverbiales. Uh, and we'll focus uh, this video on le, les locutions adverbiales when they will replace or when they will be associated with an adverb that will end with ment, M-E-N-T. Okay, so let's see now an example so of course when we're talking about adverbs like here we're talking about well this word that you can add to the verb to give more information like il parle gentiment okay you get here the verb parler parler is to speak or to talk and then gentiment nicely okay donc il parle gentiment so that's the first option i mean you can add this adverb after your verb just to give more information okay or then it would be possible also to use what we call locution adverbiale okay to well clearly get exactly the same meaning but in that case here you will use well une locution so a group of words Okay, and then these words are not adverbs, but then they will have the same function and the result will be the same. Il parle avec, so avec, with, and then gentillesse, kindness, avec gentillesse. Il parle avec gentillesse. So this avec gentillesse, this is exactly what we call locution adverbiale. Okay, so we'll see a few examples now. And the first one will be prudemment prudemment okay so you get the translation here prudemment okay and then you could use in locution adverbal adverbial avec prudence okay so you can use prudemment or then you can use avec prudence all right patiemment patiemment you get a translation here or then you could use avec patience okay patiemment 
avec patience. Calmement, calmement, or then, avec calme. Ok, so whether calmement, or then, avec calme. Péniblement, péniblement, translation here, or then you could use avec peine, avec peine. All right, so whether péniblement or l'allocution adverbiale, sorry, avec peine. Merveilleusement, it's a long one, <laughs> merveilleusement, merveilleusement, okay, you get the translation here, but then you could use à merveille, all right, so whether merveilleusement or à merveille. Effectivement, effectivement, well then, en effet. En effet. Ok, so, effectivement, en effet. Généralement, 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 or then, en général. Généralement, or en général. Particulièrement, 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 or en particulier, en particulier, particulièrement, en particulier, partiellement, partiellement, or then, en partie, ok, partiellement, en partie. Silencieusement, 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 or then you could use en silence, silencieusement, en silence. Progressivement, 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 or then you could use whether petit à petit or peu à peu. Ok, so, progressivement, or, petit à petit, ou peu à peu. And that's it. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier is waiting for you. Like me on Facebook, I will be so happy. www.facebook.com slash imagier.net. Ok, and the website, if you want more material, is right here. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon E. And in this lesson, we'll work together on what we call les locutions adverbiales. So when we talk about uh, les locutions adverbiales, we will talk about group of words that will together, um, when you put them together, you can use them instead of an adverb. Okay, so it can be quite useful. And uh, we'll see a list of uh, locutions adverbiales in this video. Okay, so the first one would be à juste titre. À juste titre. Okay, and you'll find below the translation in English. À juste titre. À tort. À tort. À tort. À volonté. À volonté. À volonté. Oops, sorry. <laughs> à l'écart. À l'écart. À l'écart. À l'endroit. À l'endroit. À l'endroit. And then, à l'envers, à l'envers, à l'envers. À l'unanimité, à l'unanimité. It's a tricky one, this one. Unanimité, 
à l'unanimité, à l'unanimité. Du coup, du coup, du coup, du coup. En fait, so whether you pronounce the final T or not, you can hear both. En fait, en fait, en fait. I'd rather pronounce it personally. En fait. En réalité. En réalité. En réalité. En vrac. En vrac. En vrac. Par cœur. Par cœur. Par cœur. Whoops. Sorry, and that's it. <laughs> If you want more videos, then the YouTube channel is right here, youtube.com slash imagier. And then like me on Facebook. I will be really happy. And the address is right here. More material can be found at the following address, www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon F. And in this lesson, we'll work together on what we call les antonymes, okay, or then we can use as well les contraires. And uh, we'll see only les antonymes or les contraires that will be constructed with les préfixes D or DE, accent aigu, S. Okay, so but then, well then, the first thing that maybe we should define or clear out is what an antonyme or un contraire is and well in English it's almost the same okay or then contraire it's opposite okay so we'll see this these uh, antonyme or contraire uh, constructed with D or DE accent aigu S and we'll first start with the DE accent aigu and so the first one favorable Okay, so I will put all the time in green here, the translation in English. Favorable, and it will give us défavorable. All right, so favorable, défavorable. Favorisé, favorisé. Same technique, we just put this dé. Défavorisé, okay, favorisé, défavorisé. Pénaliser, pénaliser, will give us dépénaliser. Okay, so pénaliser, dépénaliser. And then, obviously, the substantive as well, pénalisation. Pénalisation, will give us dépénalisation. Okay, pénalisation, and then just dé, dépénalisation. And now we'll see the other group, so D, E, accent aigu, S, okay, so you get to keep in mind that, of course, we will put this S because, well, the words will start with whether a vowel or the sound of a vowel. That's normally the reason why we put this S uh, like that when we're talking about this prefix, okay? So, first one, agréable, agréable, and then it will give us désagréable, ok, agréable, and then désagréable, espérer, so it's the verb here, espérer, and then it will give us désespérer, désespérer, ok, so espérer, and then désespérer, substantive, espoir, espoir, Exactly the same way of constructing or constructing the, 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 the thing. So, désespoir. Espoir, désespoir. Obéir. Okay, the verb obéir. And then we'll get désobéir. All right, so obéir and désobéir. Obéissance. Obéissance will give us 
désobéissance, désobéissance, ok, so, obéissance, and then, désobéissance, organiser, that's the verb, organiser, and it will give us, désorganiser, désorganiser, ok, so, organiser, and then, désorganiser, and then, naturally, organisation, organisation will give us désorganisation, ok, désorganisation, organisation, désorganisation. And that's it, if you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier, like me on Facebook, I will be so happy, facebook.com slash imagier.net, and then more material can be found right here, www.imagier.net. Have a great day, bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon G. And in this lesson, we'll see together what we call les antonymes, or then it's also possible to call them les contraires, okay? And we'll see especially les antonymes ou contraires that will start with a prefix mal or me, okay? So first thing that we should see together is what is an antonym or un contraire, well in English it would, it would be translated by antonym or opposite, okay? And so we'll see in this lesson first the antonym that will start with mal, and then after that we'll see the ones that will start with me, okay? So let's concentrate first on the mal. And so, first example, quite interesting, and it's heureux here, okay? So you can see the translation in English here in green, heureux, okay, and so if you want to make the opposite, le contraire, l'antonyme, then you just put this mal and then heureux, malheureux, all right, so heureux will give you malheureux, all right, second example, honnête, honnête, and then exact, exactly the same rule, so malhonnête, Malhonnête, so honnête, malhonnête. Habile, habile will give you malhabile, malhabile. Okay, so habile, and then you just put this mal, malhabile. Adroit, adroit will give you maladroit. Okay, so quite simple, adroit, and then maladroit. So now let's see the one that will start with me, okay? And the first one is content, okay? So I did put the feminine form here, like that. So content, masculine form, of course, if you put the feminine form, then you will have to add this e, uh, and then phonetically it will be a bit different. It will be contente, okay? So masculin, content. Féminin, contente. All right, and then if you want to put uh, the opposite or construct the opposite, so you will get this me, mécontent, and then the feminine form, mécontente. Okay, so content, mécontent, and then the feminine, contente, mécontente. All right. Connu, so exactly the same thing. I did put the feminine form here, but then phonetically it doesn't exist, you don't pronounce it, so it will be the same form phonetically for the masculine form and the feminine form. Connu, okay, so connu, and then it will give you méconnu, okay, connu, méconnu. And that's it. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier. And then like me on Facebook, I will be so happy. This is the address here. And more material can be found at the following address, www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon H. 
And in this lesson, we'll see together le verbe faire. Le verbe faire is uh, used uh, quite much in French language. And then I thought it might be useful to make a little uh, lesson regarding the verb, the verb faire and uh, the different uses we've got uh, for this verb. And of course, so I can see, I can show you the example. We'll have the, the translation. Okay, so faire here and then we've got an example here faire un gâteau un gâteau it's a cake okay and in that case of course if you want to translate that well you could use this to make okay and then faire un dessin un dessin a drawing faire un dessin in that case that's it would be translated with to do okay so these are of course the two first uh, translations that normally we tend to uh, use when we translate the verb faire okay but then we'll see that we've got other uses of faire for instance faire du piano okay and in that case well clearly you would translate it with to play okay faire du piano and then it could be as well faire du foot du football so basket whatever so we're talking here about um well um, sport activity and in that case it will be also to play Okay, uh, faire les magasins. Okay, magasin. Uh, we're talking about uh, boutique, so shops. And in that case, it would be to go shopping. Okay, so faire un gâteau, faire un dessin, faire du piano, faire du foot, faire les magasins. Okay, let's see some other uses. The f well, here, faire le mort. Okay, uh, to play dead. Faire le mort, so it could be uh, faire. Uh, Faire le fou, faire uh, something, so actually you, you pretend to be something that you're not, okay? So in that case, faire le mort, to play dead. Uh, faire 10 euros, it's quite interesting because we tend to use that quite often as well when you're talking about the price, so the, the, the how much it will cost, okay? So ça fait 10 euros, okay? In that case, translation would be to cost. Uh, it's also possible to use this uh, faire when you're talking about the weight, so faire 300 grammes or then it's also possible if you want to talk about your size so in that case when you say faire 1 mètre 80 of course you're talking about uh, your size so to be tall and then faire du diabète so you can see that it's also possible to use it when we're talking about uh, medical uh, things and then so it would be in that case to have of course Ne rien faire, and especially this sentence, it's, uh, well, it's quite common to use this, ça ne fait rien, okay, and the translation would be, it doesn't matter, okay, so ça ne fait rien, ça ne fait rien. Other little modification, ça ne me fait rien, okay, so ça ne me fait rien, in that case it's for me, and, well, translation would be, I don't mind. Okay, so ça ne fait rien, it doesn't matter, but then ça ne me fait rien, I don't mind. Okay, then faire quelque chose, uh, in that case it would be to act, all right. Faire jeune, so when you use this expression, il fait jeune, uh, you're talking about the appearance, so it would be to look, okay, to look young, faire jeune. Uh, faire bien, ça fait bien. And the, the translation would be to look as well, so it looks good. Okay, the last page, but not uh, the least interesting. So, il fait chaud, so you can see that we tend to use this faire when we're talking about, well, the weather or the temperature. So, in that case, it's hot. And then, il fait froid, so obviously it's cold. And we've got this expression that we tend to use quite often, il fait beau. Okay, and then the translation will be, it's a nice weather or it's a lovely day. Il fait beau. Okay, you can put that, of course, at the negative form as well. Or then, ça fait trois ans que. And in that case, the translation will be, it's been three years since. Okay, ça fait trois ans que. Or then we can take another example. And it would be a, a slightly different. Ça fait deux ans que j'apprends le français. So the translation would be, I have been learning French for two years. Okay. And that's it. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier. Don't forget to like me on Facebook because it's right here. And the website www.imagier.net is waiting for you.
Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon I. And in this lesson, we'll see together what we call les locutions adverbiales qui expriment le temps. Okay, so first thing, of course, is what are we talking about when we're talking about une locution adverbiale. Okay, well, actually, it's quite simple because if we're talking about une locution adverbiale, so we'll talk about a group of words that will together replace an adverb. Okay, so it's an option that you will have to complete a verb because that's the first function of what we call an adverb. Okay, but then you don't have to use uh, this adverb if it exists or if it doesn't exist. And still in that case you will use this locution adverbiale. So group of words that will be used instead of an adverb. Okay, so to complete a verb. So we'll see them right now. À l'instant. Okay, and then for each locution adverbiale, I will give you the translation in English right here. Okay, so à l'instant. À la longue. À la longue. À présent. À présent. À l'avenir. À l'avenir. Avec le temps. Avec le temps. Avec le temps. Pour l'instant. Pour l'instant. Pour l'instant. En ce moment. En ce moment. En ce moment. Pour le moment. Pour le moment, pour le moment. De bonne heure, de bonne heure, de bonne heure. Tôt, tôt, tôt. Tard. 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 D'un moment à l'autre. D'un moment à l'autre. D'un moment à l'autre. En avance. En avance. En avance. À l'heure. À L'heure à l'heure. En retard. En retard. En retard. Sur le champ. Sur le champ. Sur le champ. Tout de suite. Tout de suite. Tout de suite. Or then it's also possible to pronounce it like tout de suite. Tout de, tout de suite. Tout à l'heure. Tout à l'heure. Tout à l'heure. And that's it. If you want more videos, then the channel is waiting for you. YouTube.com slash Imagier. And then like me on Facebook. I will be so happy. And it's right here. And the website is waiting for you if you want more material. www.imagier.net Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon J. And in this lesson, we'll see what we call les locutions adverbiales 
and then qui exprime la rapidité. And of course, the first thing that we've got to well understand is what is une locution adverbiale. And well, the answer is quite simple. When we're talking about une locution adverbiale, we're talking about a group of words that all together will be used instead of what we call an adverb. Okay, so remember when we're talking about an adverb, it's this type of words that we will use normally to complete um, a verb, so to give more information uh, with a verb. Uh, and then in that case, in most of the cases, we tend to use an adverb, but then it's also possible to use group of words that will all together uh, have the same use and the same function of like an adverb. Okay, so we'll see them together right now. The first one, à toute vitesse. Okay, and you will see here the translation in English. Okay, à toute vitesse. À toute vitesse. À toute vitesse. À toute allure. À toute allure. À toute allure. En un clin d'œil. En un clin d'œil. En un clin d'œil. En un rien de temps. En un rien de temps. En un rien de temps. En toute hâte. En toute hâte. En toute hâte. Oops, and that's it. If you want more videos, then uh, the channel is right here, youtube.com slash imagier. And then uh, I'm also on Facebook, so if you want to like me, then it's right here. And uh, can, you can find more material at the following address, www.imagier.net. Voilà, voilà. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon K. And in this lesson, we'll see together les locutions adverbiales qui expriment la situation géographique. Okay, but then the first thing that we've got uh, to see is, of course, what are we talking when we are talking about une locution adverbiale? And actually, it's quite simple because une locution adverbiale well, it's a group of words that all together will be used as an adverb, an adverb, okay? So that's exactly what we will use une locution adverbiale for, okay? So it's just to complete a verb, all right? And then you're using it instead of an adverb just because, well, you want to use something else if the adverb is existing or then in some cases, well, adverbs are not existing to express uh, what la locution adverbi adverbiale sorry, will express. Okay, so we'll see now the first one. Au-dessus. Au-dessus. Okay, so each time you will see the translation in English below. Au-dessus. Au-dessous. 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 En dessous. En dessous. En dessous. En face. En face. En face. Par dessus. Par dessus. Par dessus. Par dessous. Par dessous. Par dessous. Sans dessus dessous. Sans dessus dessous.
sans dessus dessous. And that's it. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier. And then like me on Facebook. I will be so happy. It's right here. And of course, the website is waiting for you. If you want more material, www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon L. And in this lesson, we will see vocabulary and it will concern le repas. Okay, so let's start now. Un potage. Un potage. Un potage. Une soupe. Une Soupe, une soupe, un bouillon, un bouillon, un bouillon, un rôti, un rôti, un rôti, un ragoût, un Ragout, un ragout, un soufflé, un soufflé, un soufflé, une quiche, une quiche, une quiche, un chiche kebab, or un kebab, un kebab, un kebab, or then un chiche kebab, un chiche kebab, une boulette de viande, une boulette de viande, une boulette de viande, une omelette. Une omelette, une omelette, un sauté, un sauté, un sauté, une salade verte, une salade verte, une salade verte. Une salade composée. Une salade composée. Une salade composée. Des pâtes. Des pâtes. Des pâtes. Du riz. Du riz. Du riz. Une vinaigrette. Une vinaigrette. Une vinaigrette. Une entrée. Une entrée. Une entrée. Un plat principal. Un plat principal. Un plat principal. Un accompagnement. Un accompagnement. Un accompagnement. Un fromage. Un fromage. Un fromage. Un dessert. Un Dessert, un dessert. Whoops! And that's it. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier. And then uh, if you want to like me on Facebook, it's right here. The website, if you want more material, www.imagier.net is waiting for you. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon 10. And in this lesson, we'll continue this series of uh, vocabulary lessons. And in this lesson, we'll see les produits laitiers. Okay, you've got a translation here in English. So, les produits laitiers. Let's start right now. 
un lait entier. Un lait entier. Un lait entier. Un lait demi écrémé. Un lait demi écrémé. Un lait demi écrémé. Un lait écrémé. Un lait écrémé. Un lait écrémé. Un beurre. Un beurre. Un beurre. Une margarine. Une margarine. Sorry. <laughs> Une margarine. Well, this one was, was not too difficult anyway. Une crème. Une crème. Une crème. Une crème allégée. Une crème allégée. Une crème allégée. Une crème épaisse. Une crème épaisse. Une crème épaisse. Une crème fouettée. Une crème fouettée. Une crème fouettée. Une crème fraîche. Une crème fraîche. Une crème fraîche. Un yaourt. Oups. Un yaourt. Un yaourt. Une glace. Une glace. Une glace. Un fromage. Un fromage. Un fromage. Un fromage à pâte molle. Un fromage à pâte molle. Un fromage à pâte molle. Oups. My God. Un fromage à pâte semi-molle. Un fromage à pâte semi-molle. Un fromage à pâte semi-molle. Un fromage à pâte pressée non cuite. Un fromage à pâte pressée non cuite. Un fromage à pâte pressée non cuite. Un fromage à pâte pressée cuite. Un fromage à pâte pressée cuite. Un fromage à pâte pressée cuite. Un fromage à la crème. Un fromage à la crème. Un fromage à la crème. Un fromage frais. Un fromage frais. Un fromage frais. Un fromage râpé. Un fromage râpé. Un fromage râpé. And that's it. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier waiting for you. Like me on Facebook. I will be so happy. And it's right here. And the website is waiting for you. www.imagier.net Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, leçon N. And in this lesson, we'll see together les oeufs. So it will be a short one, but uh, I think it's quite useful in some cases to only focus on a little, little thing, okay? So after that, everything is clear. The first one that we'll see is un oeuf. Un 
œuf, un œuf. And the tricky thing when we're talking about eggs is that if you listen carefully, the pronunciation is changing quite much because for the singular form it's œuf, but then for the plural form here it's ö, okay? Des œufs. Des ö, des œufs. Un œuf de poule. Un œuf de poule. Un œuf de poule. Un œuf de canne. Un œuf de canne. Un œuf de canne. Un œuf de caille. Un œuf de caille. Un œuf de caille. Un œuf doigt. Un œuf doigt. Un œuf doigt. Une coquille. Une coquille. Une coquille. Le blanc d'œuf. Le blanc d'œuf. Le blanc d'œuf. Le jaune d'œuf. Le jaune d'œuf. Le jaune d'œuf. Oops, and that's it. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash image is waiting for you. Then like me on Facebook. I will be so happy. And it's right here. The website www.imagier.net is still waiting for you. If you want more material, have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, leçon O. And in this lesson, we'll see together, so it will be a vocabulary uh, video lesson, and we'll see les herbes. Okay, so let's start now. Le fenouil. Le fenouil. Le fenouil. La feuille de laurier. La feuille de laurier. La feuille de laurier. Le persil. In some cases you can hear persil. Okay, but normally it should be le persil. Le persil. Le persil. La ciboulette. La ciboulette. La ciboulette. La menthe. La menthe. La menthe. Le thym. Le thym. Le thym. La sauge. La sauge. La sauge. L'estragon. L'estragon. La marjolaine. La marjolaine. La marjolaine. Le basilic. Le basilic. Le basilic. L'origan. L'origan. La coriandre. La coriandre. La coriandre. L'anette. L'anette. Le romarin. Le romarin. Le romarin. Et voilà. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, so it's right here if you want to like me.
And then more material can be found right here, www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon P. And in this lesson, we'll continue our vocabulary series of videos. And in this video, we'll see les haricots et les pois. Okay? So we've got the translation in English right here. Let's start now. Un haricot vert. Un haricot vert. Un haricot vert. Un haricot grimpant. Un haricot grimpant. Sorry. Un haricot grimpant. Une fève. Une fève. Une fève. Un gros haricot blanc. Un gros haricot blanc. Un gros haricot blanc. Un haricot blanc. Un haricot blanc. Un haricot blanc. Un haricot rouge. Un haricot rouge. Un haricot rouge. Une graine de soja. Une graine de soja. Une graine de soja. Un haricot à œil noir. Un Haricot à œil noir, un haricot à œil noir. Un flageolet. Un flageolet, un flageolet. Une lentille. Une lentille, une lentille. Une lentille rouge. Une lentille rouge. Une lentille rouge. Un pois chiche. Un pois chiche. Un pois chiche. Un pois cassé. Un pois cassé. Cassé, un poids cassé. Et voilà. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier. And then remember that you can like me on Facebook. I'm right here. And more material can be found at the following address. www.imagier.net Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon Q. And we'll continue our series of uh, videos that will focus on the, the vocabulary. And in this video, we'll see les poissons. So quite useful one. Une lotte. Une lotte. Une lotte. Un macro. Un Macro, un macro. Un espadon. Un espadon, un espadon. Une sole. Une sole, une sole. Une limande sole. Une limande sol, une limande sol. Un aigle fin, un aigle fin, un aigle fin. Une sardine, une sardine, une sardine. Une raie, 
une raie, une raie. Un merlan, un merlan, un merlan. Un bar, un bar, un bar. Un saumon. Un saumon, un saumon. Une morue, une morue, une morue. Une dorade, une dorade, une dorade. Un ton, un ton, un ton. Un rouget barbet, un rouget barbet, un rouget barbet. Un flétan, un flétan, un flétan. Une truite arc-en-ciel. Une truite arc-en-ciel. Une truite arc-en-ciel. And this is it. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier. And then I'm also on Facebook, so check the address. It's right here. And then more material can be found at the following address. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon R. We will continue the series that, that we've been starting uh, regarding uh, vocabulary. So uh, this video will be a vocabulary video. Okay, and the topic will be faire à manger. And we'll concentrate on les adjectifs. Okay, so let's see now. Griller. Griller. Mariner, mariner, macérer, macérer, en sauce, en sauce, farci. Farci. En purée. En purée. Cuit. Cuit. Bouilli. Bouilli. Pocher, pocher, sauter, sauter, frit, frit, cuit à la vapeur. Cuit à la vapeur. Fumer. Fumer. Sécher. Sécher. Et voilà. More videos can be found right here. Don't forget, I am on Facebook, so... Click on like, I will be really happy. And then you can go at the following address if you want more material. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon S. And in this lesson, we'll discover together what we call le pluriel des noms composés. Because it's actually quite tricky 
for uh, persons who are learning French and even for French people, in some cases it can be quite tricky to put when we call uh, this non composé, of course, we, we call about a noun, but it's composed, so uh, normally you get two parts. And uh, when you want to put this uh, noun at the plural form, then it can be a bit tricky. This video will only um, focus on the nouns that are formed uh, by two nouns okay so we're not uh, uh, talking about uh, adjectives or verbs or preposition because it's possible in that case we're only uh, concentrating on these nouns composed by two nouns okay and well the thing is that as always in French it's never 100 percent because that's the way it work but then the good news is that it's 90% and it's quite much uh, in 90% of the cases the two nouns uh, will actually be at the plural form okay so if you want to put the, these this noun at the plural form you will have to put uh, the two nouns that compose this uh, composed noun at the plural okay I hope I'm clear <laughs> so uh, I've been preparing few examples okay and here you've got the well singer of form le singulier the first one un homme grenouille okay so I will put here that uh, translation in English okay un homme grenouille and so well as I said if you want to put this noun at the plural form then you will get des hommes here so the s mark of the plural and then here as well mark of the plural grenouille okay so un homme grenouille des hommes grenouille un homme orchestre and so you get the translation here same thing des hommes orchestre okay so you get the plural here and then the plural here okay un homme sandwich and then you will get des hommes sandwich like that as well une infirmière chef will give you des infirmières chef okay and then you can notice that well as we so previously this final s is not pronounced so clearly if you only think about I mean the phonetical aspect of the, the thing une infirmière chef des infirmières chef the only difference will be here in the liaison because actually you don't pronounce this final s here or here okay so une infirmière chef des infirmières chef un aide comptable des aides comptables Okay, same thing, you put this S and S here, but then you don't pronounce them. Un aide cuisinier. Des aides cuisiniers. Okay, S and S. Un aide infirmier. Des aides infirmiers. Un avion cargo. Des avions cargo. Same thing, S, S, but then you don't pronounce them. Un avocat conseil. Des avocats conseil. S, S, but then you don't pronounce it. Or them. Un café concert. Des cafés concerts. Un café théâtre. Des cafés théâtres. And that's it. Uh, I would advise you to watch the next uh, videos because uh, I will well continue the same uh, with the same theme. So the plural of the all these composed uh, nouns. Okay. So, but then if you want to watch more videos, then youtubecom slash image is waiting for you. And then I'm also on Facebook. So uh, don't be afraid and like me. Oh, I will be so happy. <laughs> and then more material can be found here. www.imagier.net have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is 
Unité 13, leçon T. And it's the second part uh, of this uh, topic, le pluriel des noms composés. Okay, so if you didn't watch the first part, well, I would advise you to do it. Okay, so it's, uh, maybe it would be more clear. Uh, Okay, if you did, then <laughs> let's start. And then keep in mind that this video, in this video, will uh, work or we'll, we'll see the words uh, that will be uh, composed by uh, a noun and uh, an adjective. Okay, so in the previous uh, lesson we saw, uh, well, these nouns, when they were composed by two nouns, okay, but in that case, uh, it will be noun and adjective. Okay, and then, well, it will be exactly the same thing. It's never 100% in French, so it will be 90%. So in 90% of the cases, um, you will have to put, uh, well, the noun and the adjective at the plural form if you want to, well, put this all uh, noun, so this composed noun uh, at the plural form. Okay, so we'll see how it works. And then uh, we'll have first the singular form here. So here is uh, the first one, un haut commissionnaire, okay, un haut commissionnaire. And if we want to put this word at the plural form, then it will be quite simple because you just need to here and here add the plural form. So in that case, it's S and S, okay, des hauts commissionnaires. And if you're a bit careful, you can hear that un haut commissionnaire and des hauts commissionnaires, well, clearly it is pronounced the same way so you put the s at the end of both uh, things here okay but then you don't pronounce them so it will be phonetically almost the same okay in most of the cases un haut relief okay un haut relief and if we want to put the plural form then it's quite simple because s and s but then we don't pronounce them here des hauts relief Okay, un haut relief, des hauts reliefs. Un franc-maçon, okay, un franc-maçon, and then plural form, exactly the same rule, S here and S here, des francs-maçons, and then you don't pronounce them, des francs-maçons. Un franc-tireur, un franc-tireur, and then plural form, exactly the same rule, des francs-tireurs. Un court bouillon, un court bouillon, and then if you want to put the plural form, well, same rule, S, S, you don't pronounce it, des court bouillons. Un court bouillon, des court bouillons. Un court circuit, un court circuit, same thing, des court circuits, des court circuits. Un beau père, un beau père. So here it's interesting because if you remember, we saw that previously, this beau, so the adjective beau, you get the singular form here and you get the plural here. You don't put S at the end for the plural, but you will put this X, okay? So X à la fin de beau, okay? But then it's exactly the same thing because you don't pronounce it. Des beaux Père. Okay, remember the S, but then it's silent. Des beaux-pères. Un beau-père, des beaux-pères. Une belle-mère, des belles-mères. Same rule here, S and S, but you don't pronounce it. Une belle-sœur, des belles-sœurs. Okay, une belle-sœur, des belles-sœurs. And that's it. Uh, try to watch the next video because uh, well, probably we will end this series of uh, plural of the composed nouns um, or words. Okay, but then if you want more video, then youtube.com slash image is waiting for you. If you want to like me on Facebook, I'm right here. And then the website is waiting for you, www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 13, Leçon U. And in this lesson, we'll continue this series of videos that uh, we've been starting 
well, two videos uh, before, um, and the topic is le pluriel des noms composés, and we'll take the time in this video to see something quite tricky, and I'm really sorry about that, but, well, I need to do my job and to explain or to tell you how it goes. Uh, when you get this composed noun, and uh, when this composed noun uh, is composed by first a noun or not first but then a noun and the adjective uh, grand because in most of the cases this grand will be in the first place okay uh, it will be tricky <laughs> it will be tricky let's be let's be honest um, the thing is that we'll, we will need to divide this video and to see how it works for the masculine form and then the feminine form just because uh, when we'll see the masculine form it's actually quite easy it is not difficult at all because when we've got this example like un grand père okay so of course you get first this grand and then after that you get the pair if you want to put this word at the plural form then you will get de grand père and it's actually quite simple because it will respect the rule i mean the, the the thing that we saw previously you just need to put s at the end of each words okay so grand with s and then pair with s like that okay so it's not really difficult and especially if you think about that you don't pronounce this s so actually phonetically it's the same grand pair here and grand pair here okay so let's be honest i mean if it's for the masculine form then it's not difficult but if it's for the feminine form and that's where it is a bit strange but i mean that's just a language so we need to see how it goes if you have at the singular form for the feminine this form here so grand instead of grand because normally it's an adjective and normally we should have a here okay but it does i mean it does happen that in some cases like with this word in grand-mère then actually you don't have this e uh, at the end of the adjective so if you have this form so first the adjective grand at the feminine but not really at the feminine because you don't have this e uh, okay then that's when it will be tricky because you will have well two options to put the plural form the first one will be this one so you just put this s and s at the end of the first and the second part okay and it's also possible to see it like that so only s at the end of the second word or the second part of this composed word okay so de grand-mère as i said phonetically it's the same anyway because it will be une grand-mère des grand-mère and then des grand-mère okay so phonetically the same form but you've got to keep in mind that you know this is how it should be written correctly and in that case keep in mind that the two options are co sorry correct okay so that's the first part and it's also possible to see composed words or nouns with first the adjective grand but at the feminine form like here with grande okay and then duchesse and in that case well not really difficult because you just you know do what we've been doing so far so you just put s at the end of the first part and s at the end of the second part okay and you will get une grande duchesse plural des grandes duchesses okay so i hope it is clear <laughs> uh, we've got another video coming um, concerning that topic because I think that uh, we need to we need to clarify a few things uh, more but then if you want more videos then youtube.com slash imagier and then uh, the, the page on Facebook is right here and more material can be found at the following address have a great day bye bye bonjour à tous and welcome to learn French with Vincent this is Unité 13, Leçon V, and in this lesson, we'll end the series of videos about le pluriel des noms composés, okay? And we'll see actually three different uh, type of uh, noms composés in this video, okay? So we'll start with the first one, 
and the first one actually it will be a non composé so the first part will be a non then the second part will be une préposition and the last part will be un complément okay so we'll don't worry we'll see an example uh, and in that case well in like 90 percent of the cases uh, the rule will be that it will be only le premier nom that will take the mark of the plural okay so we'll see just one example un arc-en-ciel okay so it's actually quite interesting so the meaning is here rainbow and um, if you have a look so you get first arc and then you get the preposition and after that you get the complément ciel okay and so if we respect the rule that we saw previously it's only the first part here so le nom arc that will take the mark of the plural and then it will be s okay so you will have un arc-en-ciel and then the plural form des arc-en-ciel okay you can see that as usual we don't really pronounce this final s so phonetically it's almost the same but then we've got this liaison between the two des arc-en-ciel okay second situation un nom formé d'une préposition or un préfixe et d'un nom okay and so in that case le nom prend la marque du pluriel Okay, so we'll see an example, and it's a good example and quite useful here. Une demi-heure. Okay, so demi is a half, and then heure, hour. Okay, so in that case, you get this demi first, and then you get this heure. Okay, and so if we respect the rule that we saw, it will be only le nom, like here, so heure, that will take here the plural. So you will have to put the S at the end of er, and you don't touch this prefix demi in that case. Okay, des demi-heures, une demi-heure, des demi-heures. Okay, and last but not least, un nom formé d'une phrase, locution, adverbiale, de verbe ou d'infinitif. Okay, and in that case. The good thing is that you don't need to touch the word at all. Okay, so it will stay the same whether it's at the singular form or at the plural. And then just wanted to give you this beautiful one. It's one of my of my favorite. Un je ne sais quoi. Okay. Well, it's quite used in English as well, but then I just wanted to uh, give you uh, maybe a more clear uh, translation. Okay, so un je ne sais quoi, and then if we respect the rule, then des je ne sais quoi, so you don't touch at all the word, you just put it like that, no s, okay, and then phonetically, of, of course, it's the, it's the same pronunciation, okay, un je ne sais quoi, des je ne sais quoi. And that's it. Yuppie, yuppie, it's over. Uh, if you want to check or to have uh, more videos, then they are right here on YouTube. And then uh, like me on Facebook. I will be so happy. Uh, if you want more material, then you can find it right here. www.imagier.net uh, Have a great day. Bye-bye.